I never forgot someone saying if there was really power in the name of Jesus, white people would have done everything to keep it from us. And this is why Christianity does not encourage critical thinking. The religion cannot thrive if people start using their brains. You have to be dumb to be a Christian. Because it's only when you've been dumbed down that the truth can be standing directly in front of you, staring back at you in the eyes, but you cannot see and identify the truth as the truth. And not only that, you go as far as justifying insanities. This comment right here is the Coco, no lies told, simply but accurately put and in perspective. If there truly is power in the name of Jesus, you think the colonizers who came to Africa to enslave, subdue, dehumanize, murder, grape, and steal from Africans would introduce this power to Africans so they could possibly use the power against them? No, let's make it make sense. You think they would give us, people they considered less than human, three-fifths of a man, such power? so they could use against them? You think they would introduce you to Jesus so you can pray to him and ask him to free you from them? So Africans will not take this Jesus and pray to him so that 10,000 of colonizers will fall to their left, 10,000 of colonizers will fall to their right? You think they will do that? No, 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 no. Because we have brain cells for a reason. Let's use it. The same colonizer that did not even consider us to be human beings. Three-fifths of a man, that's what they called us. Less than human. Want to come and give you salvation so that your soul can be saved. Then you will not go to heaven. And you will not be with them in heaven. No, 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 no. The same people that did not like you here on earth want you to spend eternity with them in heaven. <laughs> Common sense must be restored on this continent because obviously we know they think for here. It's so sad that we are not thinking on a continental level. And not only that, when people finally start thinking, people around them ask them to stop. I remember when I was younger and these things started kicking in because like I've said before, my deconstruction started very early. So I was making comments and asking questions and people around me immediately shut that shit down. Because not only are you not even allowed to think, you are told that for thinking those things, you would even go to hell. So fear is also one of the reasons why a lot of our people can't even let themselves think even though their soul is screaming from the inside and none of this makes sense. You know, as an adult, I finally realized why of all the animals... This lady here, I'm sure some of you already know who she is. She had an account by the name of Anita. While having that account, she inboxed me and asked me some critical questions. I answered her but I went and do more research and find out that what she was saying was right and I needed to reply her again. But when I went back, her account was banned. She now has a different account. So you might want to go and follow her. She's very informative and very intelligent girl. She said, if the name of Jesus was powerful, it wouldn't have been given to Africans. And I'll tell you why. For 400 plus years, the church that authorized the enslavement of Africans, the Pope, the Pope said, make Africans slaves forever because they considered Africans to be animals, beasts, savages. They didn't think we were human beings. That's why enslaving Africans and torturing Africans, oppressing Africans, colonizing Africans was nothing bad to them. They didn't see it as wrong. The church didn't see enslavement of Africans for 400 plus years as wrong. That's what I'm saying. How is this religion going to benefit you? How is it going to make you righteous? How is it going to make you holy? When the people who had it for over a thousand good years before coming to Africa have not repented, have not changed their evil ways. Rather, they came to Africa and demonstrated that evil character by oppressing, enslaving, raping, murdering innocent men, women, and children. They didn't think it was wrong. They didn't think it was wrong. And all this was authorized by the church. How is that religion going to save you when it didn't save them? How is it going to prosper you when it didn't prosper them? Would they give it to you if it was beneficial to them? No. <laughs> 
So the fact is, this religion was not given to you to save you. It was given to you to enslave you spiritually and mentally. Where you are buying anointing water by the pastor or the prophet that have bodyguards. Recently in Nigeria, there was a pastor that escaped assassination because of his bulletproof car. But those followers who didn't have bulletproof car were killed. <laughs> so how is this religion benefiting us? They didn't translate their medical books, engineering books, science books into your local languages. In Africa, if you don't speak English, you cannot get education. <laughs> but they gave you this Bible for free. I hope you have seen these two people who just finished talking. I just showed the clips of them and you perhaps must have known them on TikTok or any other platform as uh, making claims about Jesus Christ, the Bible and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, as a child of God, I would not like to answer these people from a religious perspective and all these things. They are asking a question by interpreting the Bible in the manner that is more led by reason, common sense, and they claim that they have, they can think they are good thinkers. You see these two people, are not the only two people who are saying this. It is becoming an African movement as a way of rendering the Bible useless, as a way of saying Christianity is nothing. But I would like to answer these people who raise these type of questions about the Bible and answer them well using myself as experience. If they have never experienced God, I will answer them. But before I do that, let me first of all give you a picture of the type of people these people belong to. Number one, they may have been church people before. But they enter church with reason, different from what they're supposed to have gone there with. They went there and they were disappointed. And for that reason, they conclude that the church is a scam. Now, after they have been disappointed, they fall into the hand of wolves in the church. They came up to start posting things like this. Or they belong to a category of people who we normally call artists who don't believe there is God. But they are trying to sound more reasonable, more logical by admitting that there is God. But they are trying to use certain things they feel they found as flaws in the Bible or certain things they can observe to prove to the world that such thing doesn't exist. No matter how much they may sound the smoothness of the argument, they are still artists. Or the third one is that they are. Um, Naturally, these people that believe they are free thinkers who believe that uh, they are gods. Free thinkers believe they are gods. They are the architect of their life, they decide everything, they are in charge of their life. And so they are trying to buy more people to join them in that collection of people who don't admit the presence of an invisible being controlling the affairs of men. And I believe that they are the ones who are in charge of their lives. And so they make videos like this and it goes trending online. And many people who are still confused about like whether it's young people or brave people or people who have made a lot of wrong decisions in life try to see sense in what they are saying. Therefore, I want to help them this afternoon to see how stupid they are for making this kind of video and trying to show them that really they are wrong in saying what they are saying. You see this video I'm making now. I placed a copy of it on my website. I even made a PDF copy of it. There is a link below in the description there. It's down there. Just go there and click it to take it to my website. There you have the liberty to download a soft copy. That's a PDF copy of this video. If perhaps you feel you do not have enough time to watch this video, that PDF will give you detailed treatment of it because I put a lot of research work there. Alright, which I wouldn't put in this place. But for them to claim that there is no power in the name of Jesus, nothing can be more outrageously mad, mentally abnormal like that. 
Number two, they say that they don't know whether actually Africans stink. Africans don't have sense of thinking. And they begin to ask a question like this. That if white man thinks there is this power in that name, do we think that they will bring it to us knowing how selfish they are? When they said that question of around that place, they started bringing out certain stories in the Bible and trying to use it to still support this same supposition. I now begin to say, okay, since you feel that we, those of us who are Christians, don't have sense, I want to put it to you that you are the one who do not have sense at all. And not that you think at all. Let me tell you why I said this. The power that is in the name of Jesus Christ is not the same thing as the power that witchcraft provides, which is actually the power that they use in both technology and everything. It is also not the same power that any man can command that will. If you know how God behaves, because you don't know, that's why you're talking what you don't know. If you know that the power that follows the name of Jesus Christ can no man at his own wishful interest command and use it any how he wants. If you know that, we'll talk this rubbish. The power, you are not talking about development, growth, and everything. That is, if they believe that white men know that there is power in this name, do we think they will give it? Let me show you why they brought it to us. White men admit that there is power in the name of Jesus. But that power does not resonate with selfish interest. And any man who lives a sinful life has no power to command that influence. We never enjoy the services of God or his own providence or anything related to him. They know it. They know it is tangible and true. And because a white man is purely selfish, he decided to bring this real power to Africa. And selected few good Christians to be the front runners of this thing. Africans saw some of these powers perhaps manifest in little ways, and they used it and suppressed the good Christians, and then used it to put in their own wicked ministers, people who are selfish like them, to come and carry out their will, threatening, intimidate, and even doing all those things you are doing because they wanted to take what belonged to us. So they used the good side of the Bible, of Christianity, to soften the ground and penetrate. And when they do, they threw away the people who they used initially as a kind of foreigners of this message. They removed them. And then the wicked ones among them took over the world. Then the Christians, these artists, people, traditional African religious people, who do not know some of these things, now come in to stand on that and say it is the people who brought the Bible to you that also do this to your fathers and your father. You forget that the people who brought the Bible came in with only few genuine Christians who preached the truth to the people. And the people experienced this power a little. By that they accepted this religion. But wicked people now faded out these particular good ones and their evil ones took over the environment and begin to subject so that they can take out everything that belongs to us to themselves for that reason. Therefore, your claim that they use the Bible to come in is true. But your claim that there is no power in the name of Jesus and that Christianity is a false religion. Bible is an instrument of subjugating and enslaving Africa. Is uh, uh, That claim is completely outrageous. It is false and it is wrong. Now let me share with you my own experience. I am a Nigerian and a good man. I thank God I didn't go in the village, so I don't know anything more about traditional African religion. In the north where I stayed and grew up, yes, I grew up and I know they have their own way of worshiping and so but as an evil man, I never got close to them to learn all those things. So whatever I'm going to say now, it's not something that happened to me because I worship one traditional one or because I'm superstitious in nature. No, it is because of the same thing. I was lucky to have preachers who now presented the Bible to me in the way I saw Christianity in a practical sense. People always mistake Christianity for religion. It is not. Christianity is a lifestyle God brought to us through His Spirit. The Bible is just an instructional material by which the Holy Spirit will enter into a man and then make what is written in the Bible to become the person's lifestyle. Now look at it this way. In the godly sense, with the target to bring us back to heaven when the time reaches. Now look at it this way. The reason why the Bible is different from any other religious book is because the Holy Spirit is always present. To work with somebody who completely commits himself to the cause of God, 
for the purpose of becoming like Jesus Christ here on earth. And for that reason, the Holy Spirit works in through the person to make it to become the person's normal way of lifestyle. And the person lives, people see the proof and evidence about that. I don't want to go about talking about the case of the fact that Christianity denies people their self-interest because that is one of the reasons why they do not come out to say all these things. But I am speaking on the ground that Christianity is not a religion, but the Spirit of God creating the life of God through us by suggesting to us things that we have read in the Bible. In other words, a religious person is somebody who reads his own holy book as a person to say, and by his own effort try to remember what is good and what is bad, and then try to do them based on situations before him. The Spirit of God and God who created us know that our mind is too incapacitated to remember everything. And so he gave us the Holy Spirit who comes around, take what we have read from the scripture and hold it for us. Whenever challenges, situations come before us that require a portion of the scripture for us to apply it, he reminds us that thing and also help us to apply it. And in that way, you notice our lifestyle become going differently from the way the people in the world lives. And that is why it is called lifestyle. So can I now give you a picture of my own personal experience? I will start like this. Number one, how I got to know my wife. Yes, you know these days, teachings about how to marry is everywhere. My wife was a member of Anglican Church. I am an Assembly of God Church member and we met in Southern Carolina State. I actually I never had any feelings for her. She was a good woman, beautiful as she was that time. But I never had any attraction for her because I was one of those people who never believe I will ever marry like. So I don't treat women as such. That way. But suddenly people started calling me and were telling me, we saw you and this lady together. Everything. Evangelism, two of you. So there's been two of you. Everything. In services, in a wedding, whatever. Only two of you working together. I took it from my dreams. The day I nearly slapped my younger brother was in the real estate of Chan, where he wanted to convince me that he has been seeing this dream for days. I didn't know who kept on distributing the dreams to people. Until lastly, I had a very strong and very conservative minister in my church that time. And that man is such a God fearing man, he's late now. Now, I know how that man doesn't allow even a brother or a sister to shake hands in anywhere. He doesn't allow the trouble. Once he sees you start asking questions. So the man was a very conservative Christian. Now, the next thing I noticed was that I, in my own suppression, because I became very disturbed with what people keep telling me, and myself, my peace left me. I went and met the man, shared what people are telling me to him. This conservative man, I expected him to scold me or to correct me, to advise me, started laughing at me. And the next thing I hear is that God has shown that to him all the way. The next step this man took was to call us up in church after some weeks later and present us before the church and say, God has chosen this brother for this sister and this sister for this brother. So young people in this church, remove your eyes from these two people. God has chosen them to live together as a couple. Do you know how many years later this relationship will have to last? Nine years. Nine years, yes, it happened like that because the time that God started showing to people all these things about me and this particular lady, I was just a jambite. A jambite means a student who just finished secondary school. He was looking for admission to the university. Now, at the same time again, I was also going through another thing, which again called, comes into play. And that will take me to the second thing I will tell you now that God did. Since perhaps people don't believe that God exists and there is no power in the name of Jesus Christ. And what is that? That is how God gave me admission. I am one of those who wrote Jam more than once. The first one I wrote was far back in 1999. I didn't get my admission. First, it was 1998. I didn't get admission. I don't want to talk about that one. Because I got admission, but because of the issue that I'm an evil man, I lost it. Alright? Then the second one came into play. I took the second one the next year, which is 2000, 1999. There was no news that I would get admission. There was no news. University of Nigeria Suka was the place I was in the University. But my target was I'm not the University of Zion. I put a B in second choice. 
Sorry, I put University of Nigeria so as second choice. I'm going to go to the University of Nigeria first choice. My jump score that time was 209. ABU didn't give me admission, no news. But from the same ABU where I sat and wrote the second time, which was in Zaria, I was in the toilet when my mom came and called me on Saturday and said, You have visitors. I said, Visitors? From where? He said, I don't know. They said they came from my visa. They brought my admission letter. The jam I wrote to register to write the third one because admission letter came three weeks before the third jam I wrote register. I went to the I just went to the jam, the third jam, and did just for feeling all right, just now. So I didn't even open the question, but I shared it. And you know what I got? 178 points. I got 178 without even looking at the question paper. What happened? I got admission letter. When I went to register myself in the university, there's a question that the examiners told me, the registrar told me, put me there. The man in my department, mechanical engineering, asked me, You must tell me now who you have in this school. Because it is not possible for you to put you in a second choice and you'll be admitted. He showed me the entire list. My name is the only name that is there. I put you in a second choice. But somebody said there's no new power in the name of Jesus Christ. I said I don't know anything about you, but I told him, he said, who are you? Tell me very well. I said, I am a child of God. That is I have to tell you. Do you know that before this letter came, I had already cried myself out oh, because all my mates have already entered university. I already knew second year, some in third year. I was only at home doing nothing. One day I went to my same pastor who I told him some things about my wife and cried in his heart. He didn't know what to tell me actually. He encouraged me, but his encouragement fell on deaf ears. When I was returning, I was crossing a green line in Kaguru. Crossing that green line, I heard a voice talking. I didn't say it is God, but I had a voice talking, so it is left for you to decide whether it is God or devil. It asked me the following question. You are disturbing me to take you to give you admission. What if it is my plan that the time you will start work is in 10 years time? And you give me trouble now to give you admission. Do you know you are going to graduate this year? I said, yeah. I nodded her. I didn't say yes. So I stood in one place because I was busy urinating that time. He said, that's why I'm keeping you at home, so that you can spend the four years now that you enter the university, graduate exactly when you get the job. That was the only thing I had, my tears dried. Therefore, when those women brought the admission letter, I rejected it. I did not accept it. I refused to accept it. And to that night, vigil again, God now told me, through prophets, which people don't agree. When in that vigil session, because I was complaining, I was not sure of this. God picked a lady, no, it is maybe the devil or a demon from a, native, uh, a shrine in Africa. I picked that lady and told me, I am sending you there on an assignment. And that is where. I get to know that this is my mission. I don't have time to give you details of everything that happened when I was there. My mission letter came. Remember, I'm already engaged to a lady. Or rather, God has engaged me to a girl. But do you know that my stay in the campus, if you sum it up together with my NYS, was exactly 10 years. Exactly 10 years. And you ask me what happened. Yes. Dan is a man with an intelligent girl. But I have students because I preached a lot in my class. And I will not tolerate anybody to do expo near me in example. Students stood up and planned for me. Nothing less than eight of my thesis. Submitted research work and everything we had disappeared. They told them to be 
thereby giving me 16 carbon bars at the end of the day. Some lecturers who know what I was able to do and what I could do in the school tell me, please give us permission to follow this thing from the back and I said, leave it. If it is God's plan, let it be. I know you call me an idiot because I am leaving God to do all those things, right? I said, we not get sense, we know the thing. Don't think. Remember all this I'm telling you, I learned them how to behave like that. I learned them from the Bible, from the Bible. I told them, leave it. If it is God's will, let it be. So I should choose to be an idiot now. According to Anita, I am an idiot. According to this part, a stupid man. And including Joshua, that's the Bible. And others who are saying we are fools. Please, I am a fool. You know? My dear, <clears throat> when I registered as a personal candidate, probation, to take over the courses again. Within one term, my friends were doing convocation. I was celebrating them as a student yet to spend another extra one year. It was not easy. It wasn't easy. I remember my class rep, Ugwani Kenneth. The moment I call him among the 15 first class holders, who won first class, I jumped up to celebrate him. Am I not stupid? I'm not graduating and I'm celebrating my mate graduate. Am I not stupid? Anita, am I not stupid? I know they say so. I know they think. I'm just a fool, made a fool by the Bible. Suddenly, I discovered I was sitting in the midst of law students. Law students. I was the only person. That was where another thought hit me. You are a stupid man. Look at your mates graduate, and you are here and celebrating them. I left that place crying. I left that place crying. And when I was going home, I left Convocation Arena, passing through Nambia's requested you. A voice spoke again. Please, so oh, I don't know where this voice is coming from. Maybe from African shrine. Maybe it is coming from one shrine I get, or one altar that I belong to. It's not the Bible that introduced me how to relate to God for God to talk to me. Because some of you believe, all of you, most of you are doing this. I need to talk to you. Hmm? The verse clearly told me you will never get work by applying. I will give you a job answer. Let me cut the long story short. The moment I graduated in 2008, which was now making it nine years. I freeze that particular moment. The moment I fish, I got I got, I was in the church again as a jobless man. The first job I needed came. The principal of the school drove to the church, saw me, and said that you are required in my school. That was how I started teaching. I've been teaching for a long time. I've been a teacher from secondary school to SS2, teaching my mates, maths and the rest. He said, You are required in our school. I started job. My first salary was 5,000. The letter appreciated to 13,000. The letter I have to go for anyone else. And the moment I was coming back from anyone else, a call came from my teacher. Telling me that you are required in Abuja. That's where I am today. And I know where I'm going next. But according to Anita, I'm an idiot. I don't know what. So that is. Uh, secondly, let me talk a little bit of what God did for me. I think he's joined me with the day. I don't have. I finished one When we were to work in 1999, it was a funny thing. You will be surprised to realize that the only money in my pocket was 5,000. I shared 52 invitations to people who are to play the role of committee of friends. Within that 5,000, I used 2,005 to buy things I want you to receive my visitors on the day the committee of friends will sit. When we sat, we realized that that same day, 26 people came in attendance. This is rare. 
this is, is difficult. Those who are wedded can testify this. Invite committee officers to attend your committee officers. It is always difficult. Even if they come, their commitment will be very low. But to cut the story short, my chairman wanted me to lie because he noticed that uh, if I don't know, find a way to improve them, they may not be able to give me something. And while I was invited to open the floor, my nature, which the Bible taught me, and the Holy Spirit helped me to live by, wasn't allowed by it. The next thing I did was to see the truth. Honestly, I don't have the money, but I have found a wife and I want to marry. Anyhow, God going to use people to help me help me. I was still talking to one man, a lecturer. Most of you still there were students and just a few lecturers. Say that. Please, you are talking too much. Let's go into it. I vow five times. Money started flying. Within a space of 10 minutes, we have cash in hand, nearly 100,000. Five bags of rice came up. Fufu, pound the yam came up. Aku, with soup came up. He said, No, no, what type of soup are we going to use? He started listing. A goosey, yes. There are some who like draw soup, yes. They started missing them to what type of meat, this and that. One man said, I'm going to buy packets of chicken. <laughs> and a lot of things started. Different people took up on them. Okay, I will take care of the responsibility for the soup. And to Anita, I hear me, there's no power in the name of Jesus. Only. But I am a Christian. I hear me. Maybe I'm the one that went and give them all these things. I was the one that moved them to do these things. I was one that just went and forced them to start doing these things. It's no more God that I decided to work with. It's no more God that I read about in the Bible that stared them and give them the willing and joyful heart to do it. Mr. Wade, I could remember, gave out his new jeep, Mr. Bush, and said, Use it for your couple's movement. You know that is. I don't have shoe. My shoe came out that day. My wedding bed came on the day of the Lord. I finished the wedding. My dad, who never trusted and believed that the wedding was possible, was possible because he was looking at my father with him. So what happened the wedding day? He himself shouted, now I believe there is God. They look at it, oh, my dad is a man who has shrines. He worship his own idol. He has his own things. But thank God, that experience alone changed his head. Today as I'm talking to him, he himself destroyed everything he has to he destroyed them. I didn't tell nobody, no of us preached them. Because he doesn't want to hear us preach. They're like people. Today is a committed member. Without any of his children praying, preaching to him. He saw the same power he said doesn't exist in the name of Jesus Christ and active, walking in the name of his children. Who chose to serve God? That one man went. We went to him. Let me share with you what happened again when my wife was pregnant. Mm, there's nothing like God who Christians are stupid people who have been deceived, who have been brainwashed. According to Joshua, Maponga, we are idiots, we don't know. At the end of this time, of this discussion, I will tell you where your observation is coming from. What is making what you are complaining about to happen. And I will tell you where, where what I'm telling you to happen is coming from. All from the same Bible. Now, we had no money on one of the occasions, no single money, no food, nothing. And I was a hostel master. We went for Bible study, my wife was pregnant with my first daughter. Heavily pregnant. Even before we go for Bible study, she told me that uh, there was no food in the house. About that. Let's just go Bible study in case maybe any family will help us. I give us some say, well, let's go, leave everything in the hand of God. We clean Bible study, we take people and start to go Nobody. We didn't have the move to visit anyone. So we went to She started complaining again. There's no food in the house. There's no money in the house. This is one of the most harmful questions a woman can ask for a husband. Because these are things that make men to go into killing, stealing, doing everything to feed their home. But I was I'm a foolish person like Anita said. I told her. Look, Whatever God wants, if He wants us to eat, He will make a way. Just trust God. Let us trust God. It was painful, but I know there are fire. Things blasting in my head. I was trying to think out a way out of this. 
We are trekking again back home because there's no money to enter with the motorcycle. Then something happened. We had gone some distance, like about four kilometers away from where we go to service, where we had somebody shouting, Stop, stop, stop. The motorcycle was coming. My best man at the wedding came and uh, stopped us and greeted us and said that one family saw us going home and they said that one, somebody keep, something keep on worrying them to give to send us food and certain amount of money. The woman had to go into her house, brought her the rice she had, she cooked for the family, divided to, to feed the flax, which is a big flax. Put meat and other things, sweet, put it to salad and give it to Eze, my best man, and give him a amount of money. Give him a kada money too. And the money, food was brought to us. I told my wife, I told the last trust all right, look at what he has done. You are the one to collect these things. My wife started to come. This is what she told me teach me how to believe. Me that say we are idiots. These people who are talking say that we are stupid. They are red bibles, instrument for the washing of Africans. You see, I didn't want to go too far in this, but I would like to share a last one. When I was a young man as a big president in a church. And not my BG. I was the person leading the prayers. While the prayers was going on, we were worshiping God, singing God to God. Two things happened like that. Actually, three of them. A lot of things happened in the church. I took note of my three. The first one was while we were still praying, because of the weather in Manchuk, Southern Kabbalah State, the weather was so cold, we had to seal off everywhere, except glass windows and glass doors. Like I allow you to see outside. And then our generating plant that was five months. I was a youth president for all the youths that I gathered there. Even some preachers who came to who were invited to come and speak to the youth who are not locked up. You don't want to preach. I feel like this is not necessarily the time they should preach you. Your attitude is still so. The next thing we noticed was that we saw a lot of sheep outside, plenty of them, what? Many of them. While we were there, Something that God picked, no, maybe it's a devil, pick a lady and started running on the cross. She was prophesying, and this was what she said. They have come, many of them. Look at them outside, like sheep, but they are not sheep, they are witches and wizards joined together. They came to attack you people. They came to strike you people. But I shall teach them a lesson. I shall strike the leader. This lady was still talking, and I was standing in the pulpit like this, what? Two ships. Suddenly I noticed something going on in the ships. One, a very big one, started falling down. Turn this way, turn the other way, turn the other way, turn the other way. And I watched the ship stretch and die. The moment that it happened, Nobody was outside. I said, the other ship took off. All of them ran away. As if it was over, another drunkard walked to the street and came to one of the doors and was banging the door with his hand, hitting it with all his might. My younger brother was a reverend man in the service of the church. He walked over to this young man. From inside, this is a boy I respect a lot because of his kind of faith. This is a young man that went to do morning cry. We say, You think we go to preach around for 3 30, 4 4 30 in the morning? We went to preach. More than 20 dogs came out and were backing, whoa, 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 backing. But by shadowing his voice, he still good. I said, Father, these dogs are not around the land of the whether God spoke to him or not, I don't know, but he said, he looked at those dogs and said, you are going to be my members. I command you now, in the name of Jesus, and for the next five minutes, all of you should stop. Then he continues preaching. By the time he returned next, 
all these dogs are going to sleep. So I'm lying down on you and walk and pass them and the door. Sleeping dogs. It's like this woman has this gift of causing things to sleep. So he commanded the drunkard who are disturbing us in the name of Jesus. Sleep there. Till we left the following morning, the drunkard was sleeping. Then what happened? That is just happened. And it has said there is no power in the name of Jesus. My younger brother is not a pastor, just a young man. I am not a pastor. What I do now is I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. Thank God I am a teacher. Because if I say I'm a pastor, you say I have been one of those pastors. So that's why I did I answer you with my life and my own. You can see that I'm sitting in my office. This is my office. This is technical driving my If I take you around, if you're doubting me, I will show you the work my students do. Right, that's what I do. I'm a teacher. Are you getting it? In fact, let me show you something. In case you are doubting me, this is my student's work. You see them? These are my student's work. So in case you are doubting it, this is my love. This is my love. Anita, you say we don't have creativity, Abi. Bible block our head to create creativity. No, 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 no. Today you're going to answer me. Let me show you some of the wild results. Maybe the Bible is preventing us from getting all those things done. You're going to answer me. You see that? These are, I hope you have seen those posts. Huh? These are this, and I don't participate in this book. This is, this is not this is something I hate from my home. Except 2020, when we had a huh? corona crisis, this is where we have poor. And after that, what do you get now? Look at it. You see this? Anita, are you watching this? Are you watching this? Are you watching this? This is the work of a man who is a child of God. You said that Christianity is affecting our thinking. What to develop? These things you saw now. Was it born by a little dog? A man that is an African nationalist. I am a child of God. I read the Bible. My life is conditioned by that. I want you to answer me when you get that kind of You say you don't think. I cannot think, and yet I'm generating this result. There are people out there who are. Let me show you something. If you had told me that people are using the Bible to perpetrate it, leave the Bible in you. Many people who preach the Bible are not born again. Some of them are Satan's agents to undermine the Bible. And you are not trying to confirm yourself as well. You are speaking all kinds of rubbish. The Bible and some African noisemakers, free thinkers, feel they can mess around with it. But let me say, most of the things that people have abandoned the teaching of the Bible and are centered on material things. That is why the power has been drawn. That is why those of us who know what the Bible is about, can find it. I have a group called Assemblies of God Nigeria. Go there, you will never see nonsense in that place. It doesn't respect anything. You bring a preacher who mess around with skin in there. It's a group that's in the Facebook. What am I saying? People do all these things. You say they do this, they do this. White man does it. White man cannot command the power that goes with the Bible, just with the name of Jesus Christ, just like that. They know they cannot. They know it is free. And that is what they mean. The best way to use it to exploit it. Let, it, let us get to one or two few people who can command this, whom God can, is working with. Send them to mission. Then the evil people who pretend to be Christians will follow them and carry out the plan of the wicked people. And that's how the bad one man came to read the letter. They say he instructed, he extracted from my archive. archive. And read it where they say, when you go to the missionary field, don't teach them the truth. Make sure you pattern the truth to fit into our interest. These are people who, you know, package themselves to be like preachers. And among them, there are genuine preachers. If not, what about this Kenyan priest that stayed there for 50 something years? The only thing he carried when he was going as a Reverend Father was just a struggling back. Maybe some of you saw that video. He's not a white man. You see, he knows what he was doing. But if you are to ask me that in the half hour, I'll tell you there is a message in the Bible. There's a difference between a man who wants to work with God, know God, 
and live with his eyes set on eternity, on heaven, in heavenly places. There's a different message that comes from that person. Now, from the person who believes, you can start enjoying life here on earth. And then, before you can go to heaven, there's a different, their messages are different. This is why I look at that young man who was saying that he don't understand what Christians are doing. He said they want to go to heaven, but they are praying for prosperity. My dear, tell for the whom God has trained. You will see God wanting to be very wealthy, very rich. God will make him rich, and yet that riches will not make any sense to him. If God wants to do something with it, he will do it. Let me just share with one or two things that God has used me to do, in case you don't know. Please, there's a link downstairs, some links down there. I have written a book titled, actually it was named initially, Hidden Steps for Peaceful Then Journey into Marriage. It was for single ladies who have not yet married yet. Who have not married yet. How do we get husband correct man fit for them, not just any kind of man? You know when I got this message, 2002, as a pastor, the way this book sold in a youth conference, she had me. Because I carried four bags to that conference. I don't know how to advertise it as a young man because I knew I was not married. How to advertise that book was a problem. It was a big problem. I was ashamed of the book I wrote. But in the midst of that doubt, thoughts came. I didn't say you got told me. Thoughts came. You see that man sitting there, take two copies, go and dash it. I carried to walk up to the man in the company of one of my boys. Went and to me. When I was talking to him, another man came. Maybe it is your shrine that went and brought the man. It is not God. Brought that man. The man came to talk to the same national coordinator. The man said, Hey, thank you for coming, doctor. This and that. Please, you are going to connect to your morning's uh, services. Please take this book from this young man. Glance through it and see if it has something for us tomorrow. You can have after Dr. Soke's message. Please, you are better to introduce it to the people. It's a national program. It was a national 2008. This thing happened. In the morning, the man did that. I noticed something like who were that came in. My book became a of The next five, ten minutes, people rush away. They are rushing. Those who have stand up, even though my book was filled with blood. Come, let me show you. Even though, look at this. This is a, one of the, the ones that have mistakes. The errors. This is a, even though it was filled with a lot of grammatical blunders, so sad is it? This was me. This was me. Yeah? You can see your name is there. Right? Filled with blunders. A lot of grammatical blunders. This book so like a hot king. People rushed this book. Rush it. They rushed it in such a manner that shocked the world. In the end of the day, it became something. And yet, this is one of the things that I experienced. The book now, I have turned it into a book on Amazon. There's an advice of book publishers. I changed the title to What Emotional Book Intelligence 2.0 for Single Ladies. If you read that book, you know that it's not me that wrote that book. The content alone will tell you. Check the link below, pick it up. If you want to, just take one and see it there. Then the second one is I read engineering and then I come up to write a novel. Trying to correct something I saw that is wrong in this one about. Something in this one that is not correct. It's the same thing we are talking about now. All this agitation found some of the roots from that place. We are this one about. Try to make this to be seen as a gent of division, suppression, and instrument for enslaving people. So, for the priest, whatever church that came around that time to succeed in dividing the people, that is what they are still doing to us today to restore and carry on. Resources. Africans were lazy as well. If you understand what the Bible can do, you use the Bible and develop Africa beyond anybody can think. If not, is Dubai not a Muslim country? Why is it in terms of development? What about Saudi Arabia and other things? Don't we have countries that are pure Islam and yet they are not developing? And yet we are telling us where we have Bible and Islam. Yet, this is a problem. It's a business. Your business is not you're trying to blame your decisions on the Bible, your wrong decisions. And we talk about this. The novel is titled Things Fall Apart to Come. My dear, that novel shakes me. There's a second one also that also wrote that is all about love and stay. That is a novel that made me to share tears before. People who don't know how to exercise and share love to people. If you read that novel, you won't be the same. 
as for the novel, that of things fall apart with you will be surprised to wonder and know whether God exists or not exists. Because the fact is that you question how can an engineer, somebody who trained as an engineer, can write this kind of book? At least, literally, as of lecturers in the university have read this book, and they question me, how did you do it? A Ghanaian lecturer, my name is Mr. Lawson, looked at this novel and said, No, this book is beyond the air. Chimamanda's work is below this level. This book needs to go further. I want to stay here because I'm not taking much of the time. In the article, I try to describe it more, but even though it is not going to be it's lengthy. But I feel video should give you a better picture of what I'm trying to say. What is on ground? If you still want to believe that the Bible is an instrument of subjugation, so continue. But that instrument, that Bible, is an instrument of building children for God. Who, when properly trained, would be a blessing to this earth. I think maybe I'm cursing this place by giving them this kind of work, and the result they are getting. Because this school will never mess around to hear that I have tried to leave. They don't. If they are trying to do that, they will do everything to stop it from living here. It's not pride. It is because of what I can deliver. And who helped me to deliver these things? It is the same God who said does not exist, or the power that follows the name of Jesus Christ. Anita. I would advise to return to God. Find your way back to God before it is late for you. And look for a correct teacher to teach you how to live the life of Christians, the life of Christ. And you will be surprised. Even you will experience that power in a different way. And one day, you are going to do that video and say, I was wrong. You will correct it. Thank you for your time. All that you have to me. God bless you. God. In Jesus. When people tell me, Christianity is white man religion. I tell them democracy is white man system of government. The, the gas you used to cook is white man's way of cooking food. We use firewood. Why don't you stick to firewood? The bed you sleep in is white man's bed. Why are you not sleeping on mats? People who tell me that are just running away from the reality of what Christianity is confronting them with, the reality of sin and the reality of the only way of salvation, the only way out of sin. If you want to stick to the fact that Christianity is a white man religion, there are so many things. The plane that you fly in is, by the white, is built by the white man. Why don't you trek? Why don't you become a winch and appear in America through African magic? Why do you need to go through plane? Stop that horse and face the only reality that Jesus provides the only salvation for sin. Thank you.